Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at analysis variance. Uh, really what we're going to do is actually look at some of the terms that go into it and it's to sort of uh, frame it as a worked example of some of the components of a uh, one-way ANOVA model. So, uh, so we're not doing an ANOVA table in this one. So, in a one-way analysis of variance, an ANOVA, in which a samples of 10 claim amounts in dollars from three different policies, so there's three groups, so three groups of 10, so 30 observations, the following means occurred. So we have Y bar one, that's Y bar there, I'll just make it a little bit easier to read. So we have three means there for the three groups, 276.7, 254.6, and 296.3. So those are the three group means, okay? And also what we're told here is we have the the sums, the residual sums of squares, which is one of the components that you would use in an ANOVA table, is given as follows. Now, this is the formal expression of it here, and that's how it's calculated. It's essentially, for each of the 30 items, subtract the uh, group mean, okay, and square it, okay? So, for the first mean, uh, group, you subtract this, the, uh, uh, this from each observation. From the second group, you subtract this from each observation, and this from each observation for the third group. Square the difference and add up all of them, okay? And in that instance, we would, if you were to do that, we would get 15,508.6, okay? Now, so, calculate estimates for, the, of the, for each of the parameters in the usual mathematical notation, which is to say, calculate mu bar, Tau, I'll just do tau one, two, three, three, the three taus, and sigma squared, okay? And here that means estimate, okay? Now, that's the question. So it doesn't really give us a lot to work with, really. It, just, it doesn't even explain what tau and sigma and mu are, but it does sort of say usual mathematical notation, mathematical model. Now, so this is the ANOVA model, and this is really what the question is about, just sort of dissecting this a bit, and just sort of getting used to this. So this is, uh, the, uh, this is a sort of linear model of the observation. And what we have here is each observation. So there's 30 of these observations, 10 in each of the three groups, so there's 30 of them, okay? Now, we'll break it down as follows. So we have the, the overall mean, an effect for each of the three groups, and then a bit of random error, okay? So essentially what happens here is that there, I is an index over the experimental units, okay? So one, two, three, all the way up to 10. J is an index over the treatment groups, okay? Now, just for the sake of simplicity and clarity, what I do is denote the number of groups P in this instance, okay? That, that'll become relevant later on. Or actually, sometimes they might denote a K if you want. Uh, P is, I just sort of stick with P, and it's not really a good reason to use P over K, but, you know, I'll just stick with P, but I'll just emphasize where you might see it as K otherwise. So this is our observations, okay? And this is the mean of the observations for the J treatment group, okay? The true mean, okay? So for each, in this case, there'll be three groups, so each would have a true mean, and we have up here those sample estimates sample means which would be estimates of the true mean okay and mu is the grand mean of all the observations okay so we call tau one two three tau j is the jth treatment effect which is a deviation from the grand mean for each treatment group for each group with the sum of those should the, the sum should equal to zero Okay, the sum of the three treatments effects terms, okay? You might actually sort of see this as known as a fixed effect sometimes. Now, just actually, the mean for each group can be uh, decomposed or expressed as the overall mean plus the treatment effect or the fixed effect, okay? Now, so sigma, or sorry, ep uh, epsilon, or var epsilon if sometimes, is uh, normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma squared, or the residual variance, 
Okay. And actually what we're asked to do is find that term there. I'm also asked to find the tau, the taus, the three taus, which is actually quite easy. Okay. So we're going to pause. I just had leftover graffiti from one of my previous videos. Anyway, simple enough. The the grand mean is the sum of the three is the mean of the three group means. Now, just a uh, just as a remark, in each n is equal to ten. Okay, so that helps a lot. Okay, so there's three groups, evenly sized groups. So essentially, we can perform a very simple calculation like that. If they weren't, you'd have to sort of do a little bit of work, extra work, to actually figure out what the overall mean is. But in this instance, we can, we're, we're sort of spared that. Okay. So the grand mean is 275.87. And the treatments, so we have three treatments. And what we have there is an estimate for each of the three treatments. And what we have there is essentially the those are the, the uh, sample means for each of the three samples. Down here. Sorry, over here. Okay. And over here we have the grand mean. Okay. And essentially it's just the difference between the two. And that's it. Sorry, just realize there that that should be a minus sign there. Okay, so that's minus 21.27, 0 0.83, and 20.43. Uh, when you add that all up and rounding for a little bit of rounding error, that should cancel out so that, that they all add, it, add up to zero. Now, the last thing is the residual variance. Okay, sorry, I just had a quick edit there because I just realized I got my calculate my degrees of freedom wrong down there. So the essentially what we have to do is calculate the residual variance, sigma squared, hat sigma squared, and that is the sum of squared for residuals divided by the degrees of freedom, which is n minus p. Also, you might write it as n minus k, okay, in some cases. So that is 30 minus uh, k or p which is 3 so it's 30 items altogether okay that's the total number just to be clear which is the total number of um, items or observations okay not just the one in each group minus the number of groups k or p okay so that is 15,508.6 divided by 27 which is 30 minus 3 Okay, and then we get 574.4. So that's it. So essentially, this is just sort of building up a familiarity with the components of an ANOVA. Okay, so rather than just doing the whole table, just sort of see how everything is built up. And really, the key outcome here really is all this stuff. This learning what's in the ANOVA table. All right, and the equation, of course. Okay, we'll leave it there.